Hi everyone, Dave here at East Rosebud Fly and Tackle. Today I'm going to do something a little differently. We're not going to tie a fly on this segment. We're going to talk a little bit about dubbing and how you can blend your own dubbing. Now there are of course lots of different types of dubbing on the market. There are dry fly dubbings which are very fine. There are sp or wet fly dubbings which are typically synthetics and then there are blends of dubbings. Hare's ear is used a lot for dubbing. It dubs well. It's an excellent nymph dubbing. The issue I want to bring up though is that you really can't control what you buy. Most of the hare's dubbing is actually cut from the body of the animal so you have equal parts guard hairs and under fur which I'll talk about a little bit. For example here's some hairline dubbing. If you take some out all these spiky hairs are the guard hairs. These come from the pole or the center mask of the hare's ear which I will show you. Now this is fine for larger flies when you want some spiky dubbing. This is olive. But again in another olive color, again another hairline product, it's also rabbit dubbing. No synthetic. But you can see it's much much finer. Mostly under fur, very few guard hairs. When I'm tying a smaller fly, this is what I want. And of course, there are plenty of dubbings out there that are blended, that have both hair and synthetic. A good example, I get this back in here, is Sanyo's Laser Dub. This has some synthetic sparkly materials in it. It also has some alpaca wool. So it dubs very nicely. Being a commercial tire, I'm very particular about the dubbing that I use for the fly that I'm trying to tie and that's why I make my own dubbing. Now you can use any any fur at all, any small mammal fur. I'm going to be using a hare's mask today. Now this is not your North American cottontail rabbit. They're much smaller than this. This is actually a European hare and they're grown commercially for food and the hare's mask is a byproduct. All mammals have two types of hair on them. One are guard hairs. And I'll show you later when I cut some out. They're very thick. They're solid hairs. They're very spiky. The purpose again is to guard the animal against brush, thorns, rain, things like that. Then you have the under fur, which is the insulation. It's very soft. There's no guard furs in it. And it makes a totally different type of dubbing than the guard hairs do. But again, you can use any type of a mammal to mix your dubbing. I'm going to also add a little sparkle yarn. This is clear Antron sparkle yarn. I use this primarily in class for touch dubbing. There are several ways you can make your own dubbing. Of course, the easiest is to cut a little dubbing off of here. If you want some synthetic fibers, cut some off and just mix it by hand. It's a slow process. You can't do very big quantities of it and it's very hard to reproduce. You might get the exact dubbing, the exact color and blend that you want, but if you didn't write it down, you can't reproduce it. Another slightly larger way to do this is a simple coffee grinder. You can, you can uh, make larger amounts of dubbing, more consistent amounts. The only issue is if you're using longer hair, this will chop it up. Maybe you want that, maybe you don't. If you're using longer synthetic fibers, those synthetic fibers tend to get wrapped around the rotor and around the blades. It can be very difficult to remove. But it's a fast, easy way to blend a medium amount of dubbing. What I'm going to show you is a very simple way. Uh, Charlie Craven has it written up in one of his books and whether it was his brainchild or somebody else's, I don't remember. We're simply going to use a Ziploc bag and some canned air to mix our dubbing. The assets of this type is you can mix large quantities. You can mix any quantity you want. You can use any length of hair, any length of synthetic. It won't chop them up but it blends it very quickly and it does a great job and so again all you need is a bag and some canned air. Now the hair's mask itself, like I said, has actually several different types of textures of fur. The pole, which is the middle part, mostly guard hairs, some under fur. I like to separate out the pole hair. I use this for the thorax. 
of like a hare's ear nymph. It's not only darker than the abdomen, but it has that spiky nature that I want. Then you also have the hair up high between the ears. It's a reddish color. There's also some in the back. Very soft under fur. It's a, it creates a different color dubbing. It's more of a reddish dubbing. Here by the tops of the cheeks, very long, nice under fur, very little guard hair, and that extends all the way down here. So I like to cut that dubbing off separately and blend it separately. The actual hair on the ears, I'll use a trimmer to shave these off, is also very sharp guard hairs. It gives you some very spiky dubbing. And don't forget the whiskers. The whiskers are the original fibets. They're excellent for use in extended mayfly bodies, mayfly tails, things like that. So it's a very versatile, and of course these come in a lot of different dyed colors. You can blend them if you want, you can keep them separate. It's very easy to do. Two tools that you really need, I really like these bent shaft scissors. It allows me to get this hair and cut it off close to the hide. If you're going to be using some synthetic, you don't want to use your good fly tying scissors, just some regular kitchen scissors to chop up the synthetics. I also use my beard trimmer to get the hair off next to the ears and down close. And I just use a couple of boxes. These are just pencil boxes you can pick up at Walmart to keep my two different types of dubbing separate. I'm going to start clipping out the pole We'll clip for a little while, then we'll come back and show you what it looks like when it's done. I start up here between the ears. Now, if you really want to separate the guard hairs and make this a really spiky mixture, stand it straight up, get your bent shaft scissors right down next to the skin and clip a patch off. If you don't want the under fur in, if you want real spiky dubbing, you can simply pull the under fur off and use this as another type of dubbing. And here I have the guard hairs. I'm only going to blend the two types. So I'm simply going to just continue to trim the hair off from the middle of the mask as close as I can. And we'll be back in a minute to show you what it looks like. Okay, we're back. I'm just showing that I've clipped out the pole. This is the dubbing that I have right now. It's, it's mostly guard hair with a little bit of under fur in it. I'm going to use my beard trimmers now to get this hair, this nice spiky hair off of the ears. All you have to do is run it down and cut that off, shave that off. So if you look at this, you can see this dubbing has a lot of little spiky guard hairs in it. And I'm going to keep this separate and we'll blend this separately from the other hair. And then I'm going to simply come back now and trim off the cheeks, which are mostly under fur. A little bit of this behind the ears. I'm going to keep that in a separate box and we'll blend that separately. So I just start off with my nice bent shaft scissors. Hold the hair straight up so you can get next close to the hide and just trim it off. Like so. And continue around the cheeks and the back of the ears. So when I finish with this, we'll be back. Welcome back. Now I did mention the whiskers, that's the first thing I cut off. There is some applications for this. This is what's left of our hair's mask. When I get done trimming, there's not too much left there. I typically will do a couple of them with each color just to get more dubbing. And these are the differences in the dubbing. This is the spiky guard hair dubbing that I removed from the pole and from the ears themselves. This is a nice, soft, under fur dubbing with virtually very few guard hairs. A different color, totally different texture. Now, if you want to add a little bit of sparkle to your dubbing, I like to use this sparkle emerger yarn. On a natural or a bleached mask, I just use the clear. But if I'm using an olive mask or a brown mask, then I'll use that color of sparkle yarn. 
And I cut it up because I teach touch dubbing, which is a type of direct dubbing in one of my classes. I cut this up very fine. And again, this is plastic. You don't want to use your good scissors on this. So just kitchen shears. You just grab a bundle of this and of course it's up to you how fine you want to chop it but I chop mine very fine so that we can use this particular dubbing technique and just keep cutting it. Now I don't use a lot of yarn. I might might use 10% to the hair mass that I have. So totally up to you. There's other synthetic materials you can use. And we'll just stop here. Okay. Let me chop some of this. All right. Now I've, I've cut up some of that fine antron. You can see it here. I've just done the one side, just the, uh, the soft under fur here. And I'm just going to blend it a little bit just to kind of keep it with the fur. And then we'll get to the heart of this whole video. All right. I don't have a lot of material there. You do want to use a bag that's big enough so that you get some swirling action in there. It's just scissors and poke a few holes through the bag. If you don't, there's no way for the air to escape. You don't need a lot. I'll just poke about five holes in here through both sides. All right, then we'll scoop up our dubbing, put it in the bag. This is really a very clean way to do this. You don't have hair all over the house. In the bag. All right, typical canned air. I'm going to hold this almost all the way closed, just enough to get the nozzle in the bag. Put the nozzle in there, close the bag right up to it. Nice and tight. Hold on to that nozzle. And there's the magic of it. It absolutely mixes everything with just a couple of squirts of air. It does not cut any materials. It blends it very well. I'll simply scoop this back out of there. There's a little bit of static electricity, but you really lose very little hair. And if you let this bag set for just a couple of minutes, the static will disappear and you'll be able to get the rest out. But if you can see little bits of sparkle yarn in that dubbing, it's extremely well blended and ready to use. Simple way to make your own hair's mask dubbing. If you have any questions, let us know. As always, thanks for joining in. Give this a try. I think you'll like it. See you next time.